Kent State Dining has added new places for students to grab a bite to eat from around the world. What's on the menu? The Ohio Heartbeat Law was just blocked. More information on this decision coming up. The night football is on Amazon Prime for the first time ever, and the Chiefs and Chargers kick off at 8.15. I'll bring you the details tonight on the TV2 Sports Report. TikTok is trying to be real, adding a new feature to the app. All these stories and more as your TV2 News starts right now. This is TV2 News. Good Thursday evening, Portage County, and thank you for joining us. I'm Nathan Welsh. And I'm Josh Aponte. We start tonight with new dining options that opened in the Kent State Student Center this past week. Kennedy Dotham has all the details about the dining options for this semester. Kennedy? Hi guys, that's right. Kent State Dining Services says they are working on celebrating students' culture through food. I spoke to Jacob Kuhn to see what the options are available for students. Kent State Student Center welcomes two new restaurants to provide more options for Kent students. You know, really a student hangout, a programming place for students. Uh, really, really excited to have, have them here on campus. Grill 72 has American style food like burgers and fries. Tahini Mediterranean restaurant was first seen as a food truck, but it has since moved into the lower level of the student center. They've been great partners with the community food truck series. Dining Services also wants to celebrate other cultures by providing specialty events for days like Indigenous Peoples Day, Hispanic Heritage Month, and Black History Month. Leaning more towards the all-inclusive and, and being involved in programming. Dining Services is also going to add a pizza restaurant to the Student Center. Um, I mean, I could just, just the list goes on and on how we are improving our services because it's important to us. Um, to serve you as a student and all the students. TV2 News will continue to, uh, continue to update you with more information when new restaurants open in the future via our website at kentwire.com. Reporting live in the Franklin Hall studio, I'm Kennedy Gotham. Thanks, Kennedy. The Flash Activities Board is throwing their 40th annual Blatt Storrel Festival this Friday on Ridsman Plaza. The event will feature local vendors, music, a t-shirt giveaway, caricatures, food trucks, and henna tattoos. The fun will last from 3 to 7 p.m. with an outdoor showing of Jurassic World held afterwards at 7.30 p.m. Jaden Smith will be making a stop on Kent's campus for Parents and Family Weekend. The celebrity will be taking part in a moderated Q&A discussion. He will be discussing his charity Just Water, which was founded in 2015 to fight water pollution. The event will take place September 16th at 7 p.m. and students can get up to Five tickets for free. Looking to get out this Friday, the Kent Rots Music Fest kicks off tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. and will go to 11 p.m. Produced by the Crooked River Arts Council and presented by Wayside Furniture, the event consists of 25 musical acts at more than 20 venues around Kent. Festival goers will be treated to plenty of musical genres from classic rock to folk to blues to everything in between. So, Nathan, we have some events going on this weekend. We got the Kent State Golden Flashes football game, and then the Browns got their home opener Sunday. Well, I know I'm excited, but I am curious what kind of weather we're going to be seeing this weekend. Colin? Well, it looks great, guys. Nice and sunny with perfect temperatures around low 80s. I'll talk about it more during my seven-day forecast later. Hello, Kent State and all of Portage County. I am Colin Lewis with your Thursday evening weather. Currently in Kent, it is about 75 degrees, feels about 76. Dew point's about 58 degrees, which makes the humidity about 50, 55. It, it feels really nice. I don't know. I'm on my way here. I was just like, yes. Uh, wind is nothing that'll blow you over. North northwest, about five miles per hour. Visibility is about 20 miles, uh, and probably good for some stargazing tonight. 
Um, if we zoom out into Northeast Ohio, you can see around uh, northern Northeast Ohio, we got um, some cooler high 60s, uh, mid to low 70s. Um, and as you get down to Mansfield, it gets a little warmer with a high 70s, around 78 degrees. If we zoom out once more, you can see central Columbus is around 80, and it just gets even worse than that. Cincinnati's at 83. They're probably uh, still breaking out those shorts. All right, uh, stay tuned and join me with your seven-day forecast and more weather updates. The, the NAACP held a forum in Kent on Wednesday to address law enforcement leaders on issues facing Portage County. Portage County NAACP Renee Ramane spoke on how the organization can work collaboratively with law enforcement. A Kent man was sentenced to serve 9 to 13 years in prison after assaulting a woman. 38-year-old Stephen Dwayne Widowson was charged for kidnapping, aggravated robbery, and third-degree sexual battery. Widowson assaulted the woman at her apartment in Kent and stole her car, which was stopped by Twinsburg police near Macedonia. They then turned him over to the Kent police. The victim's identity has not been released, but she said that she is, quote, slowly recovering. And a former Trumbull County official has been arrested and accused of menacing girls. David Hines, former Trumbull County auditor, was arrested and released Wednesday morning after reportedly following a 15-year-old girl and yelling at her to get in his car. Another young girl reported that she experienced a similar situation and got in video the license plate of the menacer. Ohio's heartbeat law has recently been blocked, banning most abortions. More on this decision. America's railroads almost undertook a massive strike. Find out what happened to prevent it after this. Can you consent with me? Imagine what you'd see if every child had a book to read. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. The College of Public Health at Kent State University prepares students for careers in some of today's most exciting health fields. Public health professionals impact lives by monitoring clinical trials, advocating for mental health, supporting active lifestyles, and more. The College of Public Health also offers open courses for any major, including its most famous course, Zombie Outbreak. Public health students can even study abroad and are encouraged to join the Public Health Student Alliance. For more information, visit kent.edu forward slash public health. Public health, solving our problems together. Hey, did you know that 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Go to the shelterpetproject.org and search your local shelters and rescues. Go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. A judge has temporarily blocked Ohio's heartbeat bill. The bill was signed by Governor Mike DeWine in 2019, and it prohibits abortions after the first detectable fetal heartbeat, which can occur within the first six weeks from gestation. The decision is a blow for opponents who have been celebrating since Roe v. Wade was overturned. The abortions are allowed for up to 20 weeks of pregnancy. A law in Indiana has recently passed that bans abortions at all stages of pregnancy with some exceptions. The law allows exceptions including to save the woman's life, to prevent any serious health risk to the woman, and for any lethal fetal anomalies. The law also allows abortions if the pregnancy was in the result of rape or incest during the first 10 weeks of fertilization. 
Abortion provide, providers who violate this law could face up to six years of prison and a fine up to $10,000. If there is any doubt about Republicans' true intentions, about their extreme abortion plans, there is no question after this week. Their plan is plain as day. Republicans want to ban abortion in every single state, and they want to punish doctors. Tensions rise in Congress over abortion bans since the overturn of Roe v. Wade. South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham introduced a, a national 15-week abortion ban. The ban includes exceptions similar to the bill recently passed in Indiana. A divide between Republican representatives has stalled the bill from passing. No official law has yet to be passed in South Carolina. And two bomb scares were reported at a University of Kentucky's campus on Wednesday. Several buildings were evacuated and were, alter were alerted around 10.30 a.m. at Sherry Hall. Students were given the all-clear signal around noon after police discovered the material discovered to be construction-related. 20-year-old Haley Reed was taken into custody and charged for posting the threat on social media platform Yik Yak. Reed said that the post was meant to be a joke. And Ohio's new gun law, House Bill 99, went into effect Monday. The law allows Ohio school boards to choose to arm staff members in the classroom and sets up training requirements for those who choose to do so. These include yearly criminal background checks and school-specific training to be organized by the Ohio School Safety Center. Welcome back to your seven-day forecast. Let's look how tonight feels. So around 9 p.m. to 3 a.m., we got a steady decline down into 55 degrees. Um, from 9 to midnight might be the, the weather to stargaze, but it gets around a little cloudy around 3. Um, if we zoom out for tomorrow, we got about 80, maybe a little um, toastier than today, slightly cloudy, but no rain, and around 14 to 20 miles visibility. Um, wind's about the same, and su sunset will be about 7 thir uh, 34 a.m. Our seven-day forecast, uh, on Monday it will be raining just a little bit, um, but that will cool us off um, out of the weekend, which is about 81, 82, pretty good for all those events. Uh, around Wednesday and, and Thursday next week, we got 82 and 71. Still pretty nice, hopefully it will cool up toward fall. Uh, stay tuned and follow us at kentwire.com for more current weather updates and news. With gas prices dropping, there's been an increase in, in spending. Let's take it to Maja Blackshear for more. Maja? Thank you. Hello. I'm Maja Blackshear with TV2 News. Despite the inflation going on, people are back to spending more money than when gas prices were up. People in the U.S. are spending more money. Thursday, the Census Bureau reported retail sales rose unexpectedly by 0.3% in August. That's after a revised decrease of 0.4% in July. The jump is being tied to the continued drop in gas prices, with Americans spending 4.2% less at the pump last month. High food inflation was reflected by a 0.2% a increase in spending at grocery stores on a monthly basis. Mortgage rates has jumped up again. This is the first time that it has passed the 6% mark since 2008 due to, to the inflation rates rising in American economy. It's also more than twice the rate from a year ago when it was 2.86%. Mortgage rates have been rising since the Federal Reserve began efforts to reduce inflation. The labor market has re remained strong despite some slowing in other areas of the economy According to Labor Depart Department data released Thursday, the number of first-time claims for unemployment benefits fell for the fifth straight week. Initial claims for unemployment insurance were 213,000 for the week ending September 10th. That's 5,000 down from the prior week, and that's the lowest level in three months. That's, that's it for today's Consumer Watch. I'm Maja Blackshare for TV2 News. President Biden announced Thursday that an agreement has been made between the railway workers and the railway company. 
A strike was planned to take place, but both sides struck middle ground. Biden calls this not just a victory for the workers, but for America. He also announced his thanks to the lead negotiators for the labor movement and looks forward to a bright future. As you might guess, I am very pleased <laughs> to announce a tentative labor agreement between, that has been reached between the railroad workers and the railway companies. This agreement is a big win for America and for both, in my view. I want to thank the lead negotiators and the, from the labor movement, the Brother of Locomotive Engineers and the trainmen, International Association of Sheet Metal and Air and Rail and Transportation Workers Union and the other labor unions engaged. And this is a win for tens of thousands of rail workers and for their dignity and the dignity of their work. It's a recognition of that. During these early, dark, uncertain days of the pandemic, they should be The Lancet COVID-19 Commission published a report Wednesday criticizing the global response to COVID-19 as, quote, a profound tragedy and a massive global failure at multiple levels. The commission cites failures in communication, lack of funding to lower income countries, and poor enforcement of mandates and regulations as just some of the blunders undertaken by nations across the globe. The White House announced Thursday a new plan to co combat COVID-19. The White House is unveiling a plan it calls the Global COVID Response 2.0. The plan's objectives include vaccinating people with the highest risk and who are the hardest to reach to prepare for the future's variants and health threats. An official said that the White House is requesting $4 billion to implement the strategy. And U.S. health officials warn against the overuse of the lone drug to treat monkeypox. This comes after the FDA updated its guidance this week for T-pox. The drug has been described to tens of thousands of patients with the virus, but officials are now cautioning that a single molecular change to the virus could have large impacts of the drug's effectiveness. Over the last several weeks, we've been pleased to see a decline in the growth of new cases here and abroad, though there are areas of the U.S. where the rate of rise in new cases is still increasing. Some high school students in Virginia are getting hands-on medical training. These future doctors and nurses can earn college credit and a nurse aid certification before they even graduate. It's a two-year program that requires students to work 50 hours in a medical facility. Students can decide to go right to work or continue college after finishing those two years. Mustang has announced its newest model. Stay tuned for more after the break. After the break, I'll break down the Guardians' postseason push as October baseball gets closer. That and much more on TV2 Sports. You think you're just checking your messages or telling a friend you're on your way. They could be the last words you ever type. Make sure you get where you're going. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Brush, brushy, brush, brushy, brush, brush your teeth. Every day and every night. Now it's your parents' turn. Here's what you gotta do. Let them have your toothbrush on that day and brushy, brush your teeth. Great job, you're almost done. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Have your teeth stay healthy. Brushy, brush with a grown up every day. 
Being a dad can be tough. When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. Yeah! But it's always worth it. I know it's really you, bro. I'm just pretending for the other kids. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. Tennis legend Roger, uh, following the Lava Cup in London, next. Tennis legend Roger Federer has announced his retirement from the ATP Tour and Grand Slams following the Lava Cup in London next week. Federer has played more than 1,500 matches over his 24-year career and retires with 20 Grand Slam wins under his belt. After a series of surgeries over the past couple of years, Federer says that despite working to bring back his body to competitive shape, it was time for him to retire. Now, I'm a huge tennis fan, and it's always sad to see a legend retire from their craft. It is. You're right, Nathan. It's always sad to see someone who is so passionate and dominating at his sport to finally hang up their racket. So we're going to send it back over to Ryan Shanko for sports. Ryan? That's right, guys. We will all remember the great career that Roger Federer had as we begin our Thursday night TV2 sports report. I'm Ryan Shanko. Let's dive in. We're going to start in the MAC with KSU Women's Volleyball. The Flashes are beginning their first of two games this week right now in the MAC as they take on Cleveland State during faculty and staff appreciation night in Kent. Tomorrow night, Kent State will take the short trip to Youngstown as they take on the Penguins Friday night at 6. The Flashes are 7-2 and, and are looking to go into the weekend at 9-2 and two before beginning conference play next Friday the 23rd against Bowling Green. Now we turn to the Diamond and the Cleveland Guardians, who hold a four-game lead in the AL Central and took on the Chicago White Sox earlier today. Now we're going to start in the top of the second inning with rookie pitcher Hunter Gaddis looking at his second career start. And it did not go well early or at all, really. Gavin Sheets got a hold of that 2-2 pitch and sent it yard. The very next batter, Andrew Vaughn, is a back-to-back home run streak for the White Sox, and it was three run just like that. Now, Will Benton got in the action for the Guardians, the only positive play, an RBI double. That cut it to 3-1, and it looked like it might be a competitive game until Gaddis got back on the mound. Uh, that's Yoan Moncada. He hit that one so far, the cameras could not even find it. And now in the fourth inning, it's Yasmani. Grandel, he takes advantage of Gaddis's rough day, and that look on his face says it all. The Guardians would lose this one 8-2, and their lead is cut down to just three games in the AL Central. Now tonight at 8-15, exclusively on Amazon Prime, Thursday Night Football makes its debut this season with a matchup, the Kansas City Chiefs and Los Angeles Chargers. On Sunday, Pat Mahomes made short work of the Raiders, throwing for five touchdowns, and Justin Herbert led his Chargers to a win as well, going for over 300 yards and three touchdowns in his season opener. Tonight will be an electric game between two of the NFL's top teams, and I think the Chiefs win 35-31. I hope everyone has a safe and blessed weekend. I've been Ryan Chanko with your TV2 Sports Report. another social media app. Find out which one after the break. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake.
don't let E. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So always separate raw meat from vegetables. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Good kisses. Good kisses. You heard how loud I, that no, was. No, I heard. I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Welcome back. Ford has an all-new Mustang, and it's not electric. The 2024 model was unveiled in Detroit yesterday night. It has a new body design and new engine options. Buyers will be able to choose between an improved 5.0-liter V8 engine or a 2.3-liter turbo turbocharged four-cylinder engine. That produces even more power and burns less fuel in the four-cylinder engine. The Mustang remains the last car, as opposed to a truck or SUV, that Ford sells in the United States. It goes on sale next summer. And TikTok is introducing a new feature that copies one of its rivals. Thursday, the short-form video app announced a new real-time sharing feature called TikTok Now. The feature will send users a timed push notification every day, reminding them to post a video or, vi a video or photo of what they're doing at that moment. That feature is modeled after the social media app Be Real. The platform has been gaining traction among young people. Tick TikTok says the feature is now available in the app for US users, but can be added as a standalone app in other regions. Now, guys, <laughs> uh, the Be Real thing. Yes. I, I am already a user of Be Real. And oh, same. Uh, oh, it's more, fun. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I'm more heavy user of Be Real than I am TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite uh, Be Real that uh, you guys have taken so far? Uh, well, I'm, I'm hearing overhead that apparently we <gasps> just missed it. Oh, the Be Real happened just no. now, and we just missed it. The, my yeah. phone's in my oh. pocket. I can't do it right now. Well, there's always next time. I love it. There's always next time. We're still being real. I mean, we are. Right we're being desk, real so. on TV, too. I mean, this is just how it's going to be. Look at that. <laughs> you love to hear it, Ryan Shanko. <laughs> well, that's all for you today. Thank you for joining us. For updates on all of these stories and more, visit our website at kentwired.com. And all our social media platforms at Kent Wired. I'm Ryan Shanko. I've, got, I've been Colin Lewis. I'm Josh Aponte. And I'm Nathan Welsh. Have a great and safe night, Portage County. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. How could you not love him? Every one of us has a voice. And every voice has the power to shape the world. Ours is no different. Our voice is 85 years in the making. A voice that's more than 700 students strong, one of the largest in the nation. It's 10 different award-winning media partners sharing 34 outlets, all working united toward a common goal. Our voice reaches 30,000 households on TV, over 22,000 magazine readers per year, half a million newspapers, feature films and stores nationwide. Our voice is pride in what we do. It empowers students, emerging professionals, to ask tough questions and demand answers. We believe in our voice. We believe in its ability to change the world. And our voice makes us who we are.